Greetings and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to be explaining an issue that I've had with standing water in my backyard and also the steps that I took to solve the problem. So I'm from the Austin, Texas suburbs and here in the suburbs, we have a lot of dense clay soil that's brought in to build homes on top of. As a result, we have a ton of this standing water. Recently, I built a French drain to fix this issue. Almost immediately after completing the French drain, I could see the difference that it made. I finished the French drain on June 3rd, and these before and after pictures were taken following thunderstorms on May 5th and June 3rd, respectively. We got it between about half an inch to an inch and a half of rain during both storms, and there was a night and day difference in the amount of standing water in my backyard. Obviously, standing water is really annoying because it attracts all sorts of gnats, the ground remains muddy for weeks, but one of the big issues with standing water that I wanted to address was root rot that is happening to my peach tree. So let me explain that a little bit more here. So this peach tree is in a part of my yard where the soil drains well. You can see there's a couple of yellow leaves in there and that's okay. There's plenty of new growth and those yellow leaves are just the tree diverting some of its resources away from its very thick foliage. The ground around the base is fairly dry. It might honestly even be a little underwatered. This tree over here likewise has really good drainage we have this wonderful new growth here, this lime green new growth, ladybugs, redwood, this peach tree looks super healthy. Now, <laughs> to, to show you the juxtaposition, and it, it's probably obvious even from just where I'm standing here that this side of my yard is at an angle. Uh, it's higher elevation and the, the neighborhoods farther out are higher elevated as well. These peach trees are being heavily overwatered by the bad drainage. I'm not sure if all of this is showing up on camera, but especially towards the top there, I have very obvious peach tree leaf curl, which is a result of overwatering. This is a good example of what it looks like. Okay, these red spots on the leaves, I had issues with this back of the old house because of bad drainage. We got the same symptoms over here, and these are wonderfully healthy trees. I can hold one of these still. You'll see the leaves there those red holes in them. That's not good at all. The reason is because of this really bad drainage and it's very severe. The dense clay soil, this is just water runoff from today from my neighbor watering. And this trench that I'm starting to dig for my French drain is like a foot deep too. So this is a pretty serious problem. Hopefully I can finish digging this trench, get everything installed and solve this issue. That brings us to step one, identifying drainage issues. So I just want to clarify and explain that I'm making this video particularly for people who are in a similar situation to myself. That would be having bad drainage issues in the suburbs. If you have a really large piece of land and you have bad drainage issues, it's probably better to look up a video from somebody who's done large landscaping because everything that I'm going to be doing does not involve power tools. Any job bigger than the one that you're seeing in this video is going to be really, really difficult. I also want to mention that this is a fairly dangerous DIY job. Depending on where you're digging, you might hit a utility line, and depending on where you're directing the water from your French drain, you could even cause foundational issues for your home. So just keep that in mind if you want to get a second opinion from a contractor or maybe hire a company to come out and do this for you. So with that being said, let me explain the process that I went about to identify where my standing water was coming from. It was really obvious from my back porch patio slab that the neighborhoods to the west of my home were more elevated than my own. I could see my neighbor's fences uh, from my backyard. It was probably the intention of the developer to have my backyard at more of a steep incline so that it would drain onto the sidewalk better, but obviously that's not the case. There were two locations in my backyard that water would really often stand. One is right next to my large peach tree where the ground over here would always be muddy and have mosquitoes everywhere. And then the second was right in front of my raised bed, where, similar situation, I would find standing water even up to two days after a big rainstorm. One other thing I noticed is that when we got a lot of rain, there would always be a river running between my house and my neighbor's house. I think it was the developer's intention for our flooding backyards to drain out onto the street this way. So, that led me to conclude that the best way to go about fixing this problem would be to build a French drain along my western fence. At first I was really hesitant about doing this because I'm draining water from the higher elevation of the northwestern corner of my backyard down south towards the street. That's also towards my house. But because of that little valley that's in between the two of our houses, I think this is going to work out well. 
Before we move on to the next step, I also wanted to discuss the anatomy of a French drain. If you're unfamiliar with what these are, basically, a French drain uses gravel and a corrugated pipe to direct water from a higher elevation to a lower elevation. The type of gravel that you use isn't super important. I'm using mountain granite for this project, but I've also seen people use river rock. You're going to want to use something that's semi-porous, but also will displace water really well. A corrugated pipe, in case you're not familiar, is a pipe with a, uh, holes in it. I've seen people use a corrugated PVC pipe, which is a PVC pipe with small holes drilled along the bottom. They also sell like a black plastic corrugated pipe that you can use for this. And the dimensions aren't super important of the trench that you'll be digging. For our purposes, if I recall my trench was about 10 to 12 inches deep and about 8 to 10 inches wide, of course there's different dimensions on this public domain image that I got from Wikipedia, but as long as your pipe is buried sufficiently deep, it should direct the water downhill from a higher elevation to a lower elevation. Which brings us to step two, gathering building materials. So here are a couple of the tools that I'm using to build my French drain. I've got 100 feet of corrugated pipe. I only need about 30 or 40, but they're selling it by the 100. I've also got a saw to cut my corrugated pipe. I've got this here. This is soil separator. It's kind of a mesh net that we're gonna use to keep all of the clay soil and granite out of our corrugated pipe. I've also got a cap for a corrugated pipe and a pop-up um, end. So basically, um, the French drain works by using gravity to push the water out through this end here. And this is gonna be our opener for the corrugated pipe. Let me show you how I'll set all of this up. Step three is digging our trench. So I was getting a bit ahead of myself to say that we needed to set up the materials. First, we're going to need to dig our trench. Depending on the length of your trench, you might want to look into using a power tool to do this. There is a piece of industrial landscaping equipment called a trencher. It is basically a large chainsaw, which you can use to cut into the earth. I used a shovel to do this, and it was extremely difficult. My trench is nearly 40 feet long, about 12 inches deep, and about 10 inches wide. Here's a shovel for scale. Also, don't tell my HOA about this but the amount of soil that I displaced was about two cubic yards, which is on the lower estimate, 4,000 pounds of soil. I'm gonna to need to rent a truck and take this to a dumping yard to get rid of it. That brings us to step four, which is wrapping the pipe to keep it out of the mud. So during this step, we are going to add our soil separator. I found it easiest to assemble everything by lining the trench with the soil separator and lying the corrugated pipe down in the trench. I used a handsaw to cut it and attach the appropriate end caps. And now we have our pipe lying in the soil separator. I also used staples just to staple it closed. You might've seen some chopsticks there, which I was using to hold the soil separator open. It was just very difficult to wrap it by myself without using stones or chopsticks or something to pin it open. That didn't break the soil separator because I doubled up on itself when I stapled it closed. That brings us to step five, which is lining the trench. So we kind of already did this, but of course, that soil separator went on our pipe. We're gonna line the trench one more time and put a nice thin layer of granite in. So on the lower end, I put in about an inch of granite, and on the upper end, I put about three inches of granite. This layer of granite is gonna do two things. One, it's going to keep our pipe away from the mud, and two, it's gonna help us with our elevation gradient. Right now I have an elevation gradient of about one foot in elevation for every 30 feet. We want something a little closer to one foot in elevation for every 20 feet. So by putting three inches of granite towards the top of the higher elevated part of our French drain, it helps us get water down where it needs to be. And up top we have our head cap and about the three inches of granite that I mentioned we had put towards the higher elevated area, tapering off after about 20 feet. Step six is gonna be burying our pipe. I started working on this on June 2nd and got about halfway done, and it worked out perfectly because we got a huge thunderstorm to test this out on June 3rd. You can see water collecting in my raised bed here, but not on the ground next to the raised bed. I was super pleased with what I had seen just as I walked out in the morning. There was even water collecting where I've rarely seen it in the base of some of these well-draining peach trees here, but not necessarily between the two fig trees where it's often accumulating in really, really large amounts. 
I was also pleased to see some water filling up the trench in places where there wasn't granite to displace it, so I went ahead and finished filling in the trench. At this point, most of the rain is let up and I have finished putting down all the granite for our French drain. So let's take a look at how it turned out. Here's the base of our drain. That's the pop-up cap. And as I've mentioned, you can kind of see the way that this is expected to work. The water is going to run down from up there where we have a lot of standing water and it'll come out of this pop-up cap where it goes onto my neighbor's side of the fence and there's significantly better landscaping there for the drainage to run out onto the street. In between our homes, there is a little bit of a valley and that's what the water is supposed to do, run in between our homes and out onto the street. Of course, um, <laughs> I've had to build this French drain because it hasn't been doing that. And you can see that well, maybe, maybe you can't. Uh, the ground here is a lot drier. Now, don't get me wrong, it's actively still raining. So it's like damp. But what there isn't is like, here's, here's our peach tree. The one that I was showing had leaf curl and really bad standing water. And if I do a side by side, like this is, you know, a huge improvement. So here's the top of the French drain and I think I did make a bit of a mistake here. This uh, this top cap is a little bit high. I think I put probably a little bit too much granite under the pipe trying to give it some downward elevation, but I don't think it's too big of a deal. Obviously, it's, it's done wonders thus far in my backyard. And as I showed in the previous video, there would often be like just water, a ton of water, especially standing between the two fig trees. And there isn't. This project turned out so well. My backyard went from being flooded with water every time we'd have a storm to clean and clear. I'm super excited to see what the outcome is gonna be with my peach trees. And of course, I'm also excited to see what kind of maintenance this French drain might require. I'm not exactly sure if it'll wind up being clogged or have some sort of issue in the future. So make sure and subscribe, stay tuned to my channel to find out the outcome of the French drain and the peach trees. And once again, Thank you for watching Austin, Texas Gardening.